Mila, Mila Jansen. I was born in the UK in Liverpool, but I've been living in, in, in Amsterdam since 1964. Well, you can figure out, I'm 77 now, so... Anyway, uh, at the moment I uh, have a store that I started when I was 50 years old where we produce machines and gadgets to separate the crystals from all of the marijuana plant. So once you have the crystals separated, you can press it and you have hash. Um, because this was the very first mechanical system to separate these crystals, uh, I think that's how I got the name Hash Queen. Um, after that we made it with ice and water and I remember the bag system. I sewed the first bags on my own sewing machine, like two or three of them with different screens to just experiment if it would work. Because I wanted to hang a screen in the water horizontally and I was trying to figure it out so that you wouldn't have to send a huge machine but that you could just send your system in an envelope. And that worked. It worked very well and uh, we've been making isolator bags ever since. Later again came the washing machine, became the bubblator. And now a washing machine was invented to get your dirty socks clean. And for the washing machine, the crystals is the dirt. So, so long as you wash it in ice water and we give you a bag to put the material inside in the washing machine, the washing machine washes like crazy and washes the crystal off the plant. And these crystals will be floating around in the runoff water. So when you run it off, you just run it through a few bags with different screens. And low presto, there you have the uh, crystals you want. I always want to tell people if when they smoke, they really like uh, to have aroma and smell then the best uh, method to separate the crystals for them would be the pollinator. Because on the outside of the crystals, I think maybe that's uh, where a lot of the terpenes and uh, cannabinoids might be. And in the ice water, that partially gets washed off. I mean, it's true. The dry sift, the pollinator hash will have great smell and taste and the isolator will have less, but it is a hell of a stronger. So I must say that I prefer the isolator hash. <laughs> Fuck the smell or the taste. <laughs>
the smoking. The joint I'm having in my hand right now is the best joint. Because all the others are past tense or dreams of future tense. But this is happening here and now, so this is the best joint. It's probably in 68, 69, and I was living up in Manali in the Himalayas, or Kulu, and some sadhus. These are the Indian religious men with uh, uh, dreadlocks on their heads and smoking chillums in honor of their, in honor of Shiva, who is their main uh, god, I guess. And uh, they decided to take us up to where the best plants grew. Because in the valleys you had all these huge plants, five, six meters tall, but they looked down on them. And we walked up to practically where the tree uh, line was. And then if there was any little hollow or dell in the mountainside, that would have been covered in snow in the winter. So the plants that grew in that dell had survived because they were covered. But they had gotten very bonsai-like and, and the branches were at very sharp angles and none of the belts were much bigger than one and a half inch. But we rubbed those and we put it in a chillum immediately and smoked it. And that smoke was probably for me the best I ever had. Walking down that mountain, the experiences of the sounds of the water and the colors I could have been on acid, but I wasn't. I just smoked just chilling with these sadhus, and that was really quite amazing smoke. Well, I must say, I, I lived here during the 60s when there was no coffee shops. In fact, I had a boutique during that time, and we were the first boutique to sell mini skirts. I mean, uh, you could cut off your own skirt and make a winnie skirt, but we actually sold them. And that was quite popular and it was a lot of hard work. Uh, we had three tailors in the back sewing away because we only sold our own clothes. That My friend, uh, my partner there, he designed them. And he was a fabulous designer, made some amazing things. But uh, every Saturday we'd be sold out and it was also the time of Timothy Leary when to drop out was where it was at. So we decided that was too much work. And seeing as there was no proper place to hang out in the evenings, we decided to turn the boutique into a tea shop where we sold tea. And uh, we had a cook who said he had to be drunk because cooks had to be drunk. And then for he'd go to the marketplace and pick up any vegetables at the end of the day that were still usable, and that's what he used. So all he had to buy was rice and some uh, oil, maybe. So well, for one guilder 50, you had a whole meal, and then for two guilders, you got tofu added, <laughs> which was like for nothing. Anyway, yeah, that was crazy. And we weren't at coffee shop because we never sold anything but we got quite uh, well known, so we had travelers actually coming back from Afghanistan with ash from there. And we even one time had an American drop out from the Vietnam War come and uh, brought us some LSD. <laughs> so I think then we closed the tea house and we all went down to the beach and rolled down the dunes and had a great day. <laughs> Well, my kids and friends mainly asked me to, uh, why didn't I make a book? And uh, in the end I did, but it took me 11 years because I'm not a, a disciplined author that sits down at <laughs> 8 in the morning. The location has to be right, the mood has to be right, <laughs> time has to be right. <laughs> but I got it done and um, I think uh, now that I look back on it, it seems to be very popular, especially with women, because I never really paid much attention to how to run your life uh, as you should. Like, uh, I don't know, I just made strange decisions and went to India and stayed there for 14 years, then started this company. And, now I travel a lot, like in this coming weekend I'll be in New York. I have a festival there and they want me there for it. 
<laughs> and we put this space together during Corona when there was not much we could do. And I had all this stuff stored in my house and in cellars and everywhere, so it was great to finally be able to put everything somewhere. And then with my daughter we spent uh, months sometimes because for that panel I had 5,000 pictures to choose from. From that panel there was 5,000 pictures to choose from. So which ones are you in the end going to choose? <laughs> I love you and uh, thank you for listening and big hugs and kisses and stay high. <laughs>